Yeah, so there is a way for people to find out who has bewitched them without consulting Masangoma. You know, the devil is so deceptive, guys. I Like, uh, some of y'all who uh, hit brick walls in your lives, and then you are like, oh snap, no, uh, clearly this is witchcraft. I don't know why all of a sudden I can't get jobs. I want to leave this job, and every interview fails. Hey, man, something's wrong. Uh, type setup thing. And then you go and you consult Amasangoma. I, I, I spoke about this yesterday, uh, about how it is that people, like so many people are being recruited into the occult because of abuse by the occult. In other words, your friend has bewitched your career. And so now all of a sudden, so it's stuck. Now all of a sudden you're blocked. And you can see that you're stuck because I mean, you know, you make an observation of your own lack of prosperity these days, right? And instead of going to God, go to try and find out if there's something wrong. They, they literally consult a sangoma just to find out if if Gunamuntu that's blocking Tlantazabo to try and find out if there's somebody that has actually cast a spell on them. On that, that whole consultation ritual on its own is an initiation. It's an initiation ritual because the moment you go to a sangoma, to find out if somebody has blocked you, that Sangoma is going to be given power by the devil to find out for you that somebody has blocked you. And that Sangoma will go out even so far as to tell you who exactly has blocked you. You will then find out Uguti Yogi Pinky. And then upon finding out that it's Pinky, you're going to be so upset. And then you're going to be like, so is there anything I can do to conquer this Pinky thing? Uh, the Sangoma will be like, you need to eat this. You need to wash with these herbs. You need to do this ritual. You need to pay this much money. Fine, whatever. And then you imagine you've been unblocked. Then the devil will enable you to go out there and still and find another a, a job. So therefore you will imagine you've been cleansed of the witchcraft of Pinky. That is a deception. And the moment that witchcraft, in other words, the witchcraft to set you free from Pinky, when it works to loose you, so now you've finally got the job interview and you succeeded and you've, you're now in your new job. Then all of a sudden you're going to start to rely on witchcraft. You're going to start to be so paranoid all the time that you're going to want to protect yourself against everybody in the office. And on top of that, how dare Pinky do that to me? So you're going to want to block Pinky yourself. You're going to want to send back to, back to sender. So you're going to want to bewitch Pinky back. You're going to want to block Pinky. Oh, you did it to me, so I'm going to do it to you. So now you're a witch. Now you're a witch. You consulted, you got initiated, and now you're bewitching other people. And then over and above bewitching other people, you now have become reliant on this thing. Such that every job that you go and you apply for, now you're consulting. Isangom. And this, that's how you get hooked. That's how people get reeled in. Now, really and truly, that is the one route that you can go. Or you can just take the simple process of being a Christian. First and foremost, even absent of Christianity, right? You can get down on your knees and basically ask the Lord, why is what's happening in my life happening? Why Fine, I might not have such a strong relationship with you, Jesus Christ. But at this point, I want to see if maybe I'll find protection in you. So please just show me what's going on in this world for crying out loud. Why am I unable to get a job? And the Lord will be faithful without a ritual, without any smoke, incense, in impepo, without you walking into some dingy hut of a sangoma that smells all too nasty, without you having to put some funny little cream on your body, without you having to look into some strange mirror, without you having to have some grunting guy with halitosis speaking all different kinds of incantations in your face. You will just get a dream. You'll be the one waking up in the morning with halitosis after you like, ah, Ah, oh, my breath smells, but you will remember your dream. The Lord will give you a dream. He's been faithful to do exactly that in the Old Testament, in the scriptures. Was given dreams. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, well, what is this? Um, it was it Daniel with, with the dream of Nebuchadnezzar to interpret it and nobody else could. And he was in danger until the Lord gave him the dream exactly. The Lord will be faithful to give you a dream. Joseph was another one uh, who was able to interpret the dreams of the cupbearer and the baker. If you ask the Lord, he will give you. Even if you don't yet know him because the lord he, if anybody um turns to him he will likewise not turn away he wants people to repent he wants people to interrogate the things of the gospel even if they're struggling with faith like thomas he will show you the holes in the hands in so far as you ask him in so far as you ask him so if you go and you ask jesus all you will wake up with in the morning is a dream instead of having to deal with the halitosis of isangoma grunting all up in your grill with cavities in their teeth exhaling co2 in your grizzard spitting and so therefore risking you with bilhazia all up in your grill and then over and above it charging you for it a dream is free you guys it's free and on top of that it does not initiate you into the occult for crying out loud once you have gotten that dream then you take it to god on some oh my goodness really truly really i'm not really sure at this point because you know it's just a dream give me another one and he will give you another one 
just like with Gideon who put out a fleece twice the Lord did not be like I am man you have little faith I'm not gonna give you a second fleece the first one was enough no he will give you as many as it takes for you to turn your life over when then you have finally found out that you then go on and ask God yet again basic process on your knees might be a little bit dusty afterwards but that's it no purple no sitting on a dirty mat in the floor of a sangomas like little premises of consultation no 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 you don't gotta do any of those strange rituals all you gotta do is get your knees just slightly ashy because you're praying and then be like okay god then what next that's when he will then start to sing you psalm 91 but psalm 91 only qualifies if you're born again get saved and you will be protected and the enemy that has come against you like a flood the lord will raise a standard above them god himself will take up your cause the battle is the lord's don't take matters into your own hands or your tiger to pinky back back to send that that's witchcraft no mm -mm. all you gotta do is pray the lord will not only block their sorcery but the lord will grant you eternal life you will be a new creation you will be light on your feet you will be nandere you will be happy you will have joy and you will have no blood on your hands you will have a, a, a clear conscience all of a sudden you will get your job interview that's what's good the lord might give you uh, you know one or two instructions to maybe fast you know for three days drink water only or whatever but really frankly that did that beats any day hanging out in some dark hut in Khang that's got funny things crawling in a corner with some dude grunting at you like asking you to say we have woman give woman don because at this point i disagree that's what's good seize and desist be afraid be very afraid so i'm more the dark guys leave the dark because this stuff will dig you like it'll dig deep holes in your apartment and you will not be able to escape any of them you will be sent to the pitch of night the 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 the, the, the bible says that the mouth of an immoral woman is a very deep pit i like to convert that scripture into the mouth of a witch doctor since they are an immoral people Mm, is a deep pit Utawa, bottomless pit just spinning wire wire boom 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 like a vortex twisting in the wind perpetually until you go to the abyss until you go to hell there is too much complexity in the kingdom of darkness all we need to do in the kingdom of heaven is pray and even then getting on your knees is 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 a reverent act to show god that you honor him but sometimes you can even pray while making muesli in the kitchen you don't gotta do all different kinds of strange weird rituals inhaling some funny little toxin coming into your lungs taking away the health of your lung capacity because and so therefore messing up with your life expectancy because season desist it's as bad as cigarettes i just feel as if they'll stop inhaling that stuff so this ang gomata tengi kaya ka ribem tan tole yez ang ibody le and it's uncouth empty it's ugly it's menacing and on top of that iditi la there's no hygiene like it's a bit like a tanga kana like walk away anyway whatever so now that we've kind of put that out there all right the lord will show you what's going on once he's shown you what's going on you then gotta get born again that's if you're not already born again if you're born again you might be inclined perhaps to fast but you don't even have to fast um you likely just kind of have to you know consecrate your, your yourself to him and psalm 91 applies to you because you have loved me i will protect you i will show you my salvation a thousand will fall on your side ten thousand on your right hand but it will not come near you but like i said in order for that to qualify for you you actually got to be saved you actually got to be born again the best weapon you have against witches and their witch craft is jesus he is simple his burden is light guys and his yoke is easy not proper hmm? come to me all of you who labor and are heavily laden and i will give you rest that's what god says take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is light is it a light burden like a burden like just like that you are to have you read pilgrim's progress guys go read pilgrim's progress this dude is out here carrying some heavy little thing his name is christian and he doesn't know whether he's coming or going until he is unburdened at the mountain over there and then he gets born again so now he's all chill but afterwards there's like struggles he has to go through you know it as a christian on the narrow road that's what's good yeah manje you busy carrying it you go if you like you're like christian in pilgrim's progress prior to his redemption you like christian in pilgrim's progress prior to his redemption you're busy carrying digoloshis, you're carrying snakes. You're visiting Amasangoma that are gonna make you uncomfortable grunting in a corner. You don't know what she's saying, she's scary, but hey, you gotta respect all that and call her Gogo even though she's only 22. Like, relax. Like, y'all need to seize and desist, honestly speaking. Stop doing that stuff. You're carrying burdens on your back. 
that's what's good like christian i feel as if though somebody needs to roll them down a mountain die dirty red die like down a molehill let it go and go to god his yoke is easy his burden is light all he expects of you for Angela, it's just prayer trust belief faith and nothing else it is a free gift of god for salvation not of anything that you've done these wish doctors they be asking you to drink blood they be asking you to kill someone comfortable chickens you're not even an fmcg manufacturer of food so you don't even know how to properly clean blood out of a chicken so it's kosher blood free that's what's good but nah these people are making you hack a chicken in your backyard in the suburbs ain't nobody trying to do that ain't nobody trying to do that guys hey they'll expect the blood of a chicken from you following which they will then expect the blood of your mom but you go me like nah but i was happy with just the chicken and the cow and they're like no but you see the more advanced you get you then gotta give me your mother maybe even the baby in your belly hmm. take the yoke of jesus it's easy his burden is light all you gotta do is pray the hardest thing you'd ever have to do in the kingdom of heaven is fasting and even then you don't have to do it it's just highly advisable that you do do it because it's a spiritual discipline that you ought to cultivate that's what's good mm. And then of course take up your cross follow jesus follow him daily understand that if anybody wants to live a life in christ they must they will suffer persecution so struggles will come with with the christian life however when you are a christian you you get and you comprehend thoroughly with every bone in your body that you cannot be cursed you can't curse those whom god has blessed therefore no witchcraft spell can ever operate against you meaning when you're going through rubbish yo god said take up your cross and follow jesus or since when was cross taken an easy feat since when was carrying a cross ever easy did you see golgotha did you see those nails in the hands of the son of man like christianity is hard it is a narrow road that leads to life that few people find and it is also hard many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him from them many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him from them all so operative term or operative compound word there is many are the afflictions of the righteous many many but the Lord delivers him from them all. All right. No one who puts their hand to the plow and then looks back is fit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Ours is a hard journey, but it, it, it's a hardship is full of joy. And we enter into heaven because at the end of it all, hallelujah. The Lord says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've done well. So the nice thing about being a Christian is that you don't write off like in the black community. Every misfortune in your life to Satan runs and turn them in my witchcraft. Listen, witchcraft rubbish yes you make war with the kingdom of darkness and witchcraft attacks that come at you and they make you like a rabble get a headache a little bit dizzy struggle to exercise but they can't ever truly successfully curse you um because the thing that enables witches to curse is you not being of god or you being backslidden or fallen that's what makes it prosper indeed we're in the days of Baal, is it balaam mm. balaam's era is premised around the fact that he made or he gave counsel to a king to cause the people of god fornicate commit sexual immor immorality and eat food sacrificed to idols then they will be cursed a bull but balaam's donkey was wreaking havoc in balaam's life by telling him look you can't curse those whom god has blessed what have i done stop brittling me so when you are blessed by god you cannot be cursed that's what's good unless of course you decide to fall into fornication unless of course you decide to live a lifestyle that is absolutely bereft of any real holiness that's when they're going to be able to nab you and bite you and curse you that's what's good but if you stay wholesome you can't be cursed which i would like to imagine i've done all these years now listen to psalm 1 psalm 1 that like psalm p pesalema english and it's silent peace pesalema 1 yeah blessed are, is the man blessed so not cursed right is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night he's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither and in all that they do they what they prosper i will finish it there that's what's good so that is blessedness meaning that even when you're going through rubbish insofar as you're not walking in the counsel of the wicked nor sitting in the seat of scoffers nor uh blessed is the man who was on the council of wicked no sits in this uh, no stands in the way of sinners no sits in the seat of scoffers and so far as you're not doing any of these things you can't be cursed so if you're going through it if you are suffering quite violently from whatever is slapping you upside the head all right guys you could be job you thoroughly could be job you're going through your test the bible made it clear that blessed are the persecuted so when you are persecuted and you're going through a minute you are blessed not cursed you can never be cursed as a true blood believer 
Have you eaten food sacrificed to idols? I don't think so. Have you fornicated, committed sexual immoralities? I don't think so. Are you living a life that is above reproach? Are you under God's grace by Romans 7? Are you putting to death the deeds of the body, beating this flesh into submission? Are you making war with this body of death and so does grace abound in your life evermore? If that's the case, you can't be cursed. So spells can't work on you to actually successfully unravel anything in your ecosystem but make no mistakes they will try because temptations will always come that's what's good offenses will come it is written in god's word but woe to the man through whom those offenses come so people will try to derail you that's why right now the occult is currently trying to make me sin against god that i might be cursable i have a cousin that's actively trying to kill me in a death ritual due to her wanting to save her family by sacrificing me i already spoke about that cousin yesterday and day before and whatever and so people work at the spells that are currently in operation from her and the strategy that she has been given by her occult organization uh, is to weaken my Christianity or to potentially if it all is possible make me walk away from God altogether because that's the only way that I can be brought low the devil is an ancient spirit so all the advice he gives his servants will be the same all throughout the ages so does that sound like anything at all familiar in the scriptures to cause a Christian to sin that she might be cursable Balaam's era it's Balaam's era when when witchcraft practitioners try to derail a Christian from God and being faithful and honoring him with all of their might they're committing Balaam's era where they are telling God's people to eat food sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immoralities when they are trying to cause Christians to sin against God that they can successfully be cursed therefore the best thing that you do as a believer is to study the scriptures first and foremost and once you have studied the scriptures understand that the best shield defense right now is your offense and what is the offense <laughs> the sword of the spirit which is the word of God boom the scriptures tell you how to live as a Christian he has given us everything we need in order to live a life in godliness so if you stand by God's word if you honor the Lord's word and you respect his precepts concerning what he has to say about your life you're safe but you're not necessarily going to be exempt or absolved from headaches you get because of witchcraft spells operating from wicked nightmares that witches are trying to impress a satanic agenda concerning your life you're not going to have no temptation coming your way the Lord does not tempt us it is the devil that tempts us however when we do get tempted the Lord always gives us a way out and the best defense is your offense what is the way out the Word of God you need to come up against everything that they're trying to do to you with the Word of God flee from sexual immorality flee from fornication when you're slapped with a sex dream like i got one last night uh what is this uh, demolish arguments every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and hold every thought a uh, captive to the obedience of jesus christ that's what you use as the sword when somebody out you trying to tell you you're dumb you're stupid you're gonna um be uh, you've been abandoned by god don't nobody care about you give up commit suicide that that's where you slap them with that corinthian uh, uh passage where you're like i will demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and i will hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of jesus christ so you conquer by the word of god the sword of the spirit which is the word of god that is your best defense all right a good offense right oh uh, so therefore whenever you see balaam's era do not be afraid be very afraid when wishes are actually trying to cause you to walk away from god it means they're frustrated by you it means they're trying to weaken you it means they're trying to finally call like succeed a death spell against you when they've been trying and trying and trying and nothing is working and right now i am suffering suffocating like no man's business with balam's era Balaam's era has been all up in my grill. My cousin is working in Balaam's era. The occult in South Africa is working in Balaam's era. Some celebrity guy that is watching my content is working in Balaam's era. Uh, my ex-boyfriend, Balaam's era. This nasty rando from America, Balaam's era. They're trying to make me walk away from Jesus because that's the thing that's making it impossible for them to land aging curses on me, land fornication curses on me, land um, uh, barrenness curses on me, uh, apostasy curses on me, all different kinds of weird stuff. They cannot do it. They can't get through to me. So now they're committing Balaam's error. And so a donkey will speak to them and kick them with a hoof in the face. But my suffering, that's not the equivalent of evidence of witchcraft. No, according to the scriptures, I'm blessed when I'm persecuted and I should um, feel happy when I'm partaking in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. On that day, I should feel quite honored, you know, uh, to live as Christ, but to die as gain. So my persecution is not evidence of, of witchcraft in operation succeeding. What would be evidence of successful witchcraft would be my apostasy. 
Evidence of successful witchcraft would be my suicide. Evidence of successful witchcraft would be, you know, me blaspheming the name of Jesus or the name of God. That that would be people that have literally succeeded to bring me low. It would be me, like going on right ahead to be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. I a man. That does not make sense for me because I'm in a rush to get married. I, I tried to have a relationship with an unbeliever that I didn't know was an unbeliever and he was slapped out of my life because I am not cursed I am blessed he tried to curse a woman whom God has blessed by basically being a fulfilled prophecy according to witches that I would end up married to an unbeliever that is a demon worshiper and God kicked him to the curb to this day he still has a boot print from heaven on his face and he's still trying to come in and I want nothing to do with him I, like basically an infidel at this point disqualified according to the faith but he's still trying to knock down the door of a woman that he will never touch because I'm blessed so I'm covered and I'm protected and every time I see his witchcraft I just demolish arguments and every lofty imagination or pretension that is trying to exalt itself above the most high and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus that is the reason therefore human individuals that witches despise prophecy it is because for whatever reason they cannot hide the eyes of people when they cast spells right uh, and the reason why they can't hide eyes of people is because even the devil is not allowed to hide them because that which is spoken in secret must be spoken on the rooftops they despise prophecy and prophecy always speaks against what they're doing prophecy however is not damning to them it can be if they don't respond appropriately they ought they can repent if they do repent for the lord will not despise anybody or turn them away who has a broken and a contrite spirit can the, his hand of wrath can be stayed that's what's good but they tend to despise prophecy because one it exposes them for the shelling on the rooftop that they are walking around in the butt nakedness and they don't want to be exposed right and secondly it also says that should you continue to walk around shelling like that you will die or you will experience this particular punishment this particular hardship and they don't want these ramifications so they then go out of their way to do everything in their power to block prophecy from coming to pass and it is this very act of trying to block prophecy that then eventually fulfills right now i've got a whole bunch of strange cousins do you understand and strange and also are strange because what are you doing in the occult king kalibona like if you're like a bunga girl you're not looking decent right now right these estranged randos are trying to humiliate the prophecies that i have been speaking uh, about them it's not like they're not listening to me that's the thing however they listen to me uh, with, with, with great sorrow and their sorrow has caused them to realize they've lost me and upon losing me now cannot fathom the prospect of me getting my life again and so they casting spells to block my prophecies and to also literally listen to this i had a dream where a cousin of mine was saying we need to get her to the age of 50 and that's 50 i'm 39 so they realize that at 40 i'm probably going to be looking exactly the same and doing the same things so 40 is no longer their goal post their initial goals goal post was 35 and <laughs> when i was like 33 i had a cousin that was like no let's get her to 35 like this i got to 35 and then it became 40 no not 40 it became late 30s will set her free and let her go fly like a bird like Nelly Furtado in her late 30s. In my late 30s, they still could not, fa they could they could not take the prospect. They could not handle the prospect of me being okay again because they lost me. I was very close and near and dear to them. And when someone you used to love goes and lives without you, a happy life. Automata we stop at that thing. So and when I was 38, when I was 37, late 30s, they were like, I saw 40. Well, now I'm at like the door of 40 and they thoroughly are saying 50. They're not even saying 45. The guy in America, I had a dream of him saying she must get to 45 like this, but they are saying 50. They thoroughly think that they're carrying puppets on a string. They're carrying me with strings like a marionette, like a puppet, dictating when I'm going to be set free except hallelujah amen can we just quote the scriptures he who has been set free by who the son of man the son of man of which is who a jesus is what a free in what deed he who has been set free by the son of man is free in deed that's what's good so i've never been a captive the bible it is written therein that the lord has come to set the captives free he has come to set liberty to the captives so if you're born again you are literally nobody's captive you've been set free from slavery to sin but this world does not gauge captivity the way that heaven gauges it because the things of god are foolishness to the man that is perishing so when they look at a persecuted christian they think she is captive except hallelujah i am more alive than you ever have been i've got eternal life when i die my spirit is going to shoot up into heaven when i 
if at all the rapture happens after I die, which it won't, my body, my spirit will then be given an incorruptible body that is going to be juicing it with glory all the way into eternity. And you're going to get to see all that glory in the millennial reign while you're walking around in this deadbeat old car called your present body. That's if you survive the tribulation. Over and above it, no sin is counted or imputed on me anymore. For as far as the east is from the west, so too are my sins removed from me, meaning I am freer than anybody ever can be. So do not look at these immortal chains. I don't eat this body of death that's inebriated with a headache right now. Alongside this body of death that is struggling to get a job interview, struggling to get a YouTube channel moving, struggling to get anything to happen at all. And so she's feeling sad and sorry for herself and so breaking out into a whole bunch of acne do not look at the chains of this mere mortal flesh it is a temporary vestige a temporary appendage frankly to my spirit that is too big for it and one day i will unveil it i will i will take it before taking a shower and i'm gonna feel relieved like walking naked in the garden as adam and eve from taking this body out I will remove this heavy body and then I will finally be what it is that I am currently struggling, striving to finally inherit because I am burdened by Lenyam Len. I'm free. It's what you must understand. On top of that, I'm free to not sin. I am free to gauge the pearl of great price as what it is. I have been drawn to the Son by the Father, and so I cannot be plucked out of His hands. All right? I am in Christ, and that is never ending. My salvation is going absolutely nowhere. I am born again, and that can never change. I can't lose my salvation. I will never go and eat the mire. I will not, never go and eat the vomit or swim around in the mire as the pig because I have seen the things to come and I have embraced them. I have, I have, I, I, I will not be embellished. It's what I need to help you guys understand i have embraced and there is no turning back that's what's good i am free in a way that free can never truly be comprehended nor grasped by flesh and blood which cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven i am currently flesh and blood and so for those reasons y'all first me what's going on you don't understand my freedom because i'm currently bleedable if you prick me, I bleed. But the day's gonna come when no such thing as that is happening. Currently, Jesus Christ is walking around in heaven with a body that has got holes in it and yet it doesn't bleed because flesh and blood cannot inherit eternal life. That's what's good. So my body will one day be stabbable but not bleedable. So this blood is what's inebriating me. It can have all different kinds of pathogens in it. It can give me a blood disease. I can get hemophilia and bleed out and just fill up from just one little prick. That's what's good. And because of your observation of this finite mortality you think me a prisoner guys when i think like this i belong to heaven do you understand it transcends all understanding the peace that i have within and like i like saying about christianity you gotta be there to get it because people without the spirit of god will always mock christianity because they don't understand the hope with which we have the glory of the hope that we have in the promise we must always be ready to explain why we have so much hope it is written in god's word of course i'm paraphrasing and I'm explaining to you why I've got so much hope. But people in the occult look at my unemployed state in a finite, mortal, fleeting, perishing earth that is one day going to be rolled like a scroll and flee from the sight of God and leave no place standing for anybody at all that is literally on the wrong side of God at the great white throne judgment. And you think that me not being able to, a salary on this earth is the end of me when I'm going to be among the people judging the world with Christ when the earth thrown away, like literally rolled out of the way and got a soccer ball kicked into fella to the corner that's what's going to happen at the end end of the ages after the millennial reign and the great white throne judgment starts to happen the earth the heavens and the earth thrown away like literally will flee from the sight of god that you are tilling the grounds off that you're juicing all of its minerals and it's everything it's diamonds it's gold and it's what you are busy wearing bling bling money and a thing walking around got chain email around your neck without carrying christ's cross around you that's what's good and this earth with all of its gold all of its silver all of its like fine wine dining caviar champagne is going to just foo, just like that flee from the sight of god and you expect me to feel uncomfortable when it's not giving me like a salary are you serious no guys blom like make like make like a flower relax the earth is dying i am not cursed because i'm suffering if anything i'm blessed and the more persecuted you are on the planet the more your reward is in heaven great is your reward in heaven i am more blessed that you literally you have okay listen up this is what's going on and god likes to quote this to me every single time when i'm suffering so much that i want to throw down tools and throw in the towel he tells me that these people are putting you in a position to inherit one of the, to inherit the best places in heaven every time they hurt you they elevate you to an even bigger inheritance in heaven 
while in and of themselves because they are persecuting a Christian and so therefore had access to the light of the gospel. They're putting themselves in a position to be in the worst part of hell. So they are separating themselves farther and farther away from you. The, diametric, the diametrical opposition is such that they will end up in the worst part of hell while you will end up in the best part of heaven because the more they persecute you, the more highly blessed you become. So do not freak out when you have to wash a whole bunch of dishes alone. Do not freak out when you get afflicted with headaches that you have to survive that grandpa that you like desperately don't want to take because you're trying to make your body focus on rather clearing the acne from some other medication and grandpa's messing with that. But every so often I have to go and take it grandpa because my headache is so bad and i'm like but lord uh, why 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 under heaven do i have to every five days because of headaches coming from the occult why is it that i even have this acne on my face why don't i have a job why can't i go see a dermatologist a dentist uh, an orthodontist why can't i why can't i why can't i and god is like every time you ask me that question and complain and every time somebody takes money from you every time somebody plots and schemes to turn you 50 is every time that you get an even more beautiful body in eternity that does not age like understand that these people are literally putting you in the baddest mansion in the game in heaven because persecuted christians across history are going to inherit some of the biggest rewards in heaven look at things that way gain perspective they're giving you greater blessings while they're also putting themselves in deeper abysmal positions they are going to be some of the most exquisitely burdensome portions of hell with the deepest despair because the closer you were to the light the more you listen to christian ministry and ignored it and mocked it and persecuted it and jeered and smeared and gestured negatively and blasphemed the deeper your experiences in eternity that the more afflicted the more deeply afflicting they will be plus you will be closest to wherever the devil is going to be burning forever i don't believe any single human being will be exactly where the devil is at because i believe he's got a special part in hell not even the antichrist he might be quite close to where the devil is at but everybody that that so violently persecuted the church that they never knew whether they're coming or going nero their poor their, their portion in the flames of hell exceeds that of regular Janes and Joes that just died uh, careless atheists could not care less but did not necessarily hurt the church layers of hell and layers therefore of punishment that's what I'm explaining to you guys and the more you persecute a Christian the more deeper you get in that is why uh, the devil is so obsessed with causing Christian persecution it is one because we are the only kingdom that can actually successfully thrive against their kingdom and secondly because he is trying to severely condemn our occult practitioners they focus on Christians they literally are made to look at us more than everybody else they're made to bewitch us more than everybody else so if you have afflicted a believer and hated them for being a believer the devil has succeeded to make you burn in the hottest part of hell close in proximity to him maybe like a kilometer away from the devil that's where you're gonna be at hottest flames ever forever so this little rando in America I feel sorry for him except not my cousin she is facing death ever so imminently God told me that it's gonna be sudden I feel sorry for her because she will have spent without even turning to Christ a good decade 12 years Ravazaring, a Christian she will find out how severe her crimes are as soon as she died which from what the Lord is showing me is not very far from today if she doesn't repent instead what they're trying to do is age me to get to the age of 50 still suffering in persecution because they thoroughly think that like a puppet on a string I'm a marionette dancing to the beat of their strange little drum be afraid be very afraid Tabang mudimu. fear the Lord do not look at the suffering of a Christian and think that your witchcraft is working you can't curse us and if we are suffering you're only giving us better blessings in heaven for being persecuted on top of that we are just going through what Christians were promised to go through the Lord predicted our struggle so we don't look at our struggle as witchcraft we look at our struggle as Christian persecution and when that happens we see glory and honor in exactly what we're going through we see that to live is Christ but to die is what yes gain we're not scared of man who can only kill the body and thereafter do nothing we're scared of the Lord who not only can kill the body but also take its soul and the body itself into hell be afraid be very afraid occult practitioners because the devil even makes you concentrate on Christians. And that is the bane of your uh, eternal existence. We are going to be the bane of your eternal existence. You will remember every time you listened to a Christian prophecy and despised it. Gnashed your teeth at it, spat at it. Every time you heard a Christian tell you repent or perish. And you hating it. You will gnash your teeth for eternity remembering every last word. You will hang on finally to every word that I'm saying but in eternity. You will wish you had listened to me. What does a prophet a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? South African witches, you remind me of American youth 
you squander your futures your families only for you to later on regret what you did but after you regret what you did you then try to sabotage people further as if though you did not already start the sabotage i had a dream where well, that was the, the one that i already told you where a cousin of mine was trying to get me to the age of 50. do you girl i don't even think that i'm gonna get to 50 like proper the rapture is at the door we're going home like very quickly very soon very day after tomorrow and you're busy planning another 10 years 11 not even 10 busy 11 years we don't have 11 years i don't think we have 11 years and even if we did have 11 years uh trust that i'm not going to be spending them in squalor poverty without anything i want if we have another 11 years left i will get a husband i will get children i will literally be popping babies in my 40s like i'm a 20 every second year there's a baby boo 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 until i'm 50 that's how fertile i would be because god will then answer my prayers in the latter years just like he did with uh hannah just like he did with rachel just like he did with sarah that's what's good so he will open my womb when medical doctors are trying to tell me i'm about to menopause so i will have as many babies as a woman that starts having a first child at the age of 22 and with a doting husband so that's the scenario that will unfold should the rapture happen in 2039 however i don't even think that's happening because we're going in the rapture and i'm getting everything i need in the millennial reign but your belief that you can age me to the age of 50 is evidence of the fact that you've been handed over to a reprobate mind for you have not loved the truth but have taken pleasure in your unrighteousness where it is that the strong delusion is my apparent cursed state that is nothing but persecution as a christian as a test that like job i'm gonna get out of this and have daughters flyer than all the daughters in the land afterwards yeah and then pray and fast on behalf of my silly friends that mocked me and teased me because i was going through a lot you fair weather randos you so i'm either going through job's experience or i am just a uh, 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 what is this a uh, five seconds from today rapture saint and the trumpet is gonna blast and you're gonna be like oh snap she told us what and frankly i believe that that's what's gonna happen i believe that the rapture is what's gonna happen but if the rapture doesn't happen i'm having babies and lots of them in my 40s because i am going to get married i will get the children because god is not gonna let me stick around in this another 10 years because that would lead to my suicide he knows how much i can take you will not tempt me beyond that which i am able but you guys you are busy leaning on my strength hoping that i'm gonna survive another 10 years while there are people who are leaning or relying on the fact that you will want me to stay in this position for another 10 years so that i will compromise against god fall away and commit suicide or something or maybe just settle with like a ray uh what is this uh, some random uh, animal uh, sitting around in america that's what's good not even america but something of that nature that guy's so ominous i would never settle for him he's so disgusting that i would never ever but something like that would prosper uh, stealthily uh, and perniciously worm itself into my life i would never settle that's what you get you need to understand and how much fortitude i have held down to date has been given me supernaturally by god to hold down to date and no more will the lord I insist i endure than what is absolutely necessary to prove a spiritual point therefore there right now if right now you you cannot foresee yourself as one that's just content with everything that um I, I keep on saying over here because you can't stomach the prospect of me being successful without any blood on my hands without carrying a digoloshi without me something deep and ominous um if you can't take it understand that what you're gonna have to take then is death because the way that the lord is going to rescue me from what he has shown me from your persistence that i should continuously get headaches every six days from what you're doing to me that i should come persistently uh struggle to exercise and move my body around at sea level and if i just hovering instead of actually getting my workout in because i'm so under demonic attack your insistence on making my life so hard because you keep on slapping me with sorcery that i survive because i see it for what it is the demonic attack is slapping me even though i am uncursable god is then gonna just you know snap like you know cut the silver cord the lord is gonna kill you guys i've said that over and over and over again that if you don't want to stop your darkness he is going to neutralize some people because if he has an intention to proliferate this earth further which at this point i can't even see how that's possible the way that the global elites are sinning so much against god the way that the world is just falling apart so violently i don't see how we can come back from this but just in case the miracle of god happens and we do come back from this and we're able to live another 10 to 20 years on the earth there's going to be almost a genocide before that happens a, a little mild flood the lord is going to cull a lot of people like animals in order to make it possible for his body on an earth that started to want to spit them out before he was ready to bring about the tribulation so one of two things is going to happen right now mass death of people in the occult or the rapture 
Either way, it's a judgment on both parties and a relief for Christians. But there is no carrying on like this. For, it's just indefinitely into the future. So I, I, I would greatly implore you to do a better thing than what you're currently doing. Because the only man. And the ugly man corner is not just you brazing your knee or stabbing your toe against a bed. Or even cutting your fingers while you're chopping tomatoes. It is hellfire. You're about to land in, in the flames. One by one by one. Last night I had a dream of my, uh, King, such a, a severity of betrayal. Like I was afflicted by a, a very hard knock sex dream. Guys, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this. I'm living a life above reproach. I don't watch porn. I don't do anything to inspire that many sex dreams, which is why people who have got all different kinds of theologies as to why anybody would be getting sex dreams, relax, because people are frustrated by them doing everything they need to do in order to avert these dreams and they still keep coming. Every time wishes cast a spell to make a person settle with fornication, they will get sex dreams. Whether or not this person has fasted it off before, whether or not this person is living a life above reproach, ours is to fight it in the morning. So deliverance ministers and all different kinds of people who come up with different theories as to what this is, stop discouraging Christians and making them think that they're walking in sin when they're not, or there's something that they've compromised with, or there is some curse that they need to lift off their bodies. We can't even be cursed as Christians. I, I, if at all, we're truly consecrated. Um, unless Balaam's error succeeds to cause us to walk away from God. In my dream, I was literally fornicating with one of my cousins at the time it was a boyfriend but right now it's a husband at the time that i, I was still hanging out with them they were just dating married not the same cousin that's busy trying to kill me but the sister remember i told you this girl has a sister that she inducted into the occult and in my dream let me move to the next part hopefully the last one as i explain this